Hi there, and welcome to Auntie Phyllis' Bajan Kitchen, where we recreate Bajan dishes as mother thought them. Let's start cooking. Hi guys. So my very first video was a short overview of a cuckoo dish. And many of you asked if I couldn't produce a more detailed one, and I agreed to. So, here it is. First, we'll start by cutting up our okras and getting them into the pot with some water and some salt to taste. We'll allow the okras to boil for about 10 minutes, which at this stage, the water will look kind of slimy and turn a bit brownish. This is quite normal, as it tells us our okras are cooked. Next, we want to get our bowl and strainer out and pour the okras into the strainer, separating them from the water. Of course, we'll be using back both, so keep them close and handy. At this point, we will lower our stove to a medium to low heat and add back about one and a half cups of the okra water. Now we are going to add our cornmeal that was sifted. I use just about two cups and this should be enough to feed a family of about six. So I'm going to try to give a brief explanation about the adding of water to the cornmeal. Adding the water allows the meal to not clump up when it hits the hot okra water and then you get what my mom used to call peas in your cuckoo. If you are not careful, these so called peas would be raw pieces of meal that would affect the outcome of your cuckoo and you probably won't want to eat it, isn't it? But today, we are doing it old school. Our meal, we are going to put it straight into the okra water and this makes it traditionally Bajan. Then we are going to try and use some elbow grease, as my mom also used to say, and beat our cuckoo. So while our meal is in the okra water, let me see if I can quickly explain now the cuckoo stick versus the whisk. The traditional cuckoo stick took more effort to remove any lumps as opposed to the whisk that we use modern day. In fact, I don't even know if the whisk existed back then when uh, the older folks started to make cuckoo. But the thing is that the whisk, it really gives you a smooth texture when the cuckoo is finished. But as I said, this is the traditional way that we are going today and hopefully I won't get too many lumps in the cuckoo. So we'll allow the cornmeal to start cooking in the okra water while spreading it out in the pot. So as our meal starts to cook just look at the pulling motion towards the size of the saucepan and this helps to eliminate some of those pesky lumps that we talked about earlier. As we keep stirring the meal in the okra water, it's going to tighten up. And this is what we are looking for. We want to get our texture so that it won't be too soupy. And look at it. It's nicely coming together. We want to allow the meal to steam. Remember, it has to cook so we don't eat raw cornmeal. This whole process is about 20 minutes, but every now and again, we want to add some of the okra water while we are stirring our corn cornmeal. Just listen to it boiling. See how nicely it's coming together. Make sure that our cornmeal is getting enough of the okra water and steaming as it cooks along. Now we are going to add our okras back and we are going to stir these into the cornmeal. We are going to 
stir and stir and beat and beat and steam and steam. And we'll also add more water so that we can keep our cocoon nice and moist. You can decide how firm or how mellow you want the texture to be just by either adding more water or as it dries out, you just, you just leave it as it is. So, our cuckoo is done. I'm going to pour it into a dish that I got added a bit of the upper water. Oh man, just look at that. Then we can take a spoon and just level it out to make it nice and pretty in our bowl. But cuckoo isn't real cuckoo without a good gravy. So today, you guys get two for one special. I'm giving you two different gravies. One made with salt fish, and the other we're going to make from a can of tuna. First, we'll start with some onions, some tomatoes, and some garlic sauteed in oil and then we'll add salt fish or as it's called otherwise salted codfish and these pieces were boiled in water um, to extract some of the salt and then we just strip them up so that we can make our gravy and we'll add our spices and herbs our oregano our thyme we will add our cilantro, mustard powder, paprika, whatever. Just, just make it your own unique selection. Then we'll stir these together. We'll add some water, some ketchup, some pepper sauce, some butter. Once this comes to a boil, then there we have it. A nice saltfish gravy ready. Similarly for our tuna gravy, we are going to do the same in a saucepan. We will saute some onions, uh, we got some flavored peppers, we got some fresh thyme and some garlic. And rather than add water this time, I'm adding some okra water that was left over from our cuckoo. Then we add our butter, ketchup, pepper sauce, We'll also add some soy sauce. This would give it a bit of a salt flavor. We're gonna add some balsamic vinegar, and this will give it a little tangy taste. And then we'll also add our herbs to flavor. Now we want to add our canned tuna chunks. We'll stir these and allow it to simmer a bit. And oh, this is lovely. And look at that. Our tuna gravy is finished. So let's put our dish together. Let's get a nice small bowl. We're going to put some butter in it just to coat the bowl. And then we're going to pack some cuckoo in it. We're going to cover this bowl with the, the dish or the plate that we're going to eat from. Give it a quick shake and turn upside down. And voila! Imagine all this just to give our cuckoo a nice rounded shape for presentation. Then we want to add our gravy. For me, I'm adding the tuna gravy to my dish. A nice, healthy helping to soak up that lovely cuckoo. So, there you have it friends. Our cuckoo with tuna gravy and our cuckoo with a saltfish gravy. Enjoy. Until next time, bye bye. 
So I hope you enjoyed our cooking time together. Until our next video, bye bye. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button or drop a comment down below.